Science. Autism affects around 1 in 100 children, like Rosalie here, with boys at a higher risk than girls. The number of people diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder has been increasing since the 1980s. Some of this is down to better diagnosis, but what doctors want to know is whether autism itself is actually becoming more common. I've called Rosalie my great mystery since she was a little girl. It's both about her as a person and her disability. Here, she can have between 20 and 30 seconds of independence before it's necessary to look after her. It's in the long run that this is difficult to manage. There is still no effective drug treatment, although recent advances in 3D imaging and genetics have given scientists new hope. Europe's at the cutting edge of autism research with its just-launched EU AIMS programme. One of its most exciting breakthroughs so far is a hint it might be possible to reverse some of the brain changes. Initially, there's a diagnosis of autism by a psychiatrist. This is very important. Afterwards, a blood test allows us to isolate a sample of DNA. Here we have all the chromosomes, in this case 11 of an individual. You can virtually explore the genome, and sometimes we can see the signal falls. And what this lower signal shows is that this child has lost by one, two, three, four, five million letters. And when he's lost five million of these letters, he's also lost all his genes. In the lab, we try to understand, among all these genes, which is or which are the genes responsible for autism in this person. There are dozens of genes responsible for autism, some involved in the development of neurons, particularly the functioning of synapses. When the genes are defective, these synapses are weakened. Researchers in this lab have created mice with a mutated gene, a mutation associated with autism. In the first tray, there are two normal mice. In the second, there is one normal mouse and one mutant mouse. The pair of normal mice engage with each other, but the altered mouse is not interested in the other mouse in its tray. Researchers have discovered a link between the lack of a particular gene, neurologin 3, and inherited cases of autism. We try to use the brain information in a way that uses its richness, its three-dimensional richness. So if you imagine, for example, the surface of the brain looks like the Alps or the, the surface of a planet. So we try to take all the three-dimensional information that's available to us to put that together to say, what's the picture of the brain in someone with autism and can we use that picture to identify individuals with and without autism. The hope is that these developments will pave the way for a faster and more reliable diagnosis for autism and eventually a treatment. Symptoms vary wildly from person to person. Some are only mildly affected, while some are severely disabled. What we're now discovering in this project is that you need to bring all these different new technologies together. So imaging, where you can see what's going on in the brain, the knowledge about genetics, the knowledge about proteins, you take all this together and you can develop what we call biomarkers to have something to measure. Because when you start giving medicines, you need to have some kind of measurement. We call it endpoint to study whether it's going to be effective or not. An effective drug would be a dream come true for families like Rosalie's.